day everyone, I am Jessin Kielantixi, your student nurse from Southwestern University of Finma. Today we'll be assessing the integumentary system. So for the initial steps, we need to identify the patient first using two patient identifiers, the name and the birth date. So we're going to introduce ourselves first to the patient before identifying them. So hello ma'am, I am Jessin Kielantixi from Southwestern University of Finma, your student nurse responsible for today. May I please ask for your name and birth date, ma'am? Okay, thank you so much. Next is to explain the purpose of the examination to the patient and answer any questions. So the purpose of this examination, ma'am, is to check your overall skin health. This will also help us identify for any infections or wounds that might indicate underlying conditions. So we can provide appropriate and immediate care afterwards. Do you have any questions or clarifications? Thank you so much. After that, we're going to perform hand hygiene to prevent the spread of infection and to ensure patient safety. And before assessing, we're going to ask first for consent of the patient. So ma'am, is it okay if I will be the one to assess you in this examination? Thank you so much. We're going to start assessing the skin. First, we're going to inspect for skin coloration. We're going to identify if there are any jaundice, such as the yellowing of the skin, cyanosis, the bluish skin coloration, pallor, the paleness of the skin, and erythema, the redness of the skin. And then we're also going to inspect the skin for any vascularity, such as bleeding or bruising. And we're going to inspect for lesions. We're going to identify if there are any bruises scratches or wounds and then if there are any we're going to note the size shape color and pattern of the lesions so now we are going to inspect the patient we are going to compare first bilaterally the skin coloration of the extremities of the patient to make sure that there are no abnormalities so this step is important because the overall skin color provides initial clues about the patient's Next, we're going to palpate for the skin temperature of the patient using the dorsal part of our hand since it is less keratinized and is very sensitive to temperature. And make sure if the patient has any open wounds or cuts, we are going to wear gloves to prevent cross-contamination. Assessing the temperature helps us identify the potential areas of inflammation or circulatory compromise. Like for instance, a warm area could indicate an infection or inflammation, while cooler areas might be a sign of poor blood flow or peripheral vascular disease. And temperature changes can also help us in assessing the body's response to trauma or illness, and a significant difference in temperature between two areas may suggest abnormal circulation. Next, we are going to palpate the skin for texture and moisture. Skin texture and moisture provides an insight into hydration and general skin health. Like for example, a dry, rough, or flaky skin may indicate dehydration, hypothyroidism, or conditions like eczema or psoriasis. And as for excessive moisture on the skin, it might be a sign of hyperhidrosis. Next, we are going to assess for skin turgor by gently pinching the skin under the clavicle. Skin turgor or skin elasticity is an important test for hydration. And pinching the skin on the upper chest, often on the
Then, we are going to palpate for edema, which is usually characterized by swelling or the shiny skin in the edematous area, usually seen in the lower extremities. Edema is the abnormal accumulation of fluid in the tissues and often presents as swelling. In this part, if there are any lesions present, put on gloves and palpate the lesion. But based on my observation, the patient doesn't have any lesion, so there's no need for palpation. Next, we're going to inspect the nail angle, noting for any clubbing present. Also, check the shape and color of the nails. We're going to instruct the patient in creating a heart symbol. This is the shamroth sign. And we're going to look for the presence of the diamond between the nails. If there's no presence of diamond, then the patient may be at risk for heart and lung diseases. So ma'am, can you please create a heart symbol? I'm just going to check if there are signs of clubbing. Clubbing of the nails is a physical sign or the angle between the nail bed Next, we're going to palpate the nail for the texture and the capillary refill. Ma'am, can you please give me your hands? Palpating the nails involves assessing their And lastly, we're going to inspect and palpate the hair and scalp. Wear gloves if there are any lesions or infestations present or if hygiene is poor. So this step is important because inspecting the hair and the scalp can reveal important clues about a patient's overall health. And hair loss may indicate thyroid disorders, nutritional deficiencies, or alopecia areata. And the skull can also be examined for dandruff, lice, or fungal infections, especially in patients who complain of itching or discomfort. And in cases of infestations or poor hygiene, gloves should be worn during palpation to reduce the risk of transmission. After doing all the steps in the assessment, we're going to proceed now to aftercare or after procedure. First, we're going to remove our gloves and then perform hand hygiene to prevent the spread of infection.
and then we're going to document all the findings in the assessment. To provide and keep records for evaluation and for continuity of care. That's all. Thank you so much. We hope you learned something.